Apple's new iPhone, the iPhone 7. How does it fare in today's overcrowded smartphone market? Is this the phone you should get? These are questions we try to answer in today's video. But before we get to that, if this is your first time here or in case you just can't remember, my name's Ash, this is C4 Retech, and you're watching my full review of the iPhone 7. Let's get started. The iPhone 7 shares a lot of similarities with its predecessor built-wise. It's still built out of aluminium, it's extremely slippery, the bezels and chin remain, and it's still less thin as its predecessor, even a little lighter. While that might not look like much, the fact that Apple's added water and dust resistance without sacrificing on the build and design is impressive by itself. Remember the last time a brand added water resistance to their flagship for the first time? Glad that's not the case here with the iPhone 7. There are some other minor changes as well. The camera protrudes a little more and the antenna lines have been moved around. The 6 and 6S designs become quite common these days and I like the change. Then there are the stereo speakers. One at the bottom that fires away from you and another up top that faces you, the earpiece. While I'd have liked dual front facing stereo speakers, these are much better than the ones on the 6S and even other flagships like the S7 or the OnePlus 3, so I'll take it. The audio via the 3.5mm headphone jack was, well, non-existent since the iPhone 7 does not have a 3.5mm headphone jack. You get earpods with a lightning connector in the box and for those like me who just cannot get the earpods to sit in their ear, you've got a lightning to 3.5mm converter included as well. So you can continue using your existing earphones. Personally, this move doesn't really bother me. Listening to music is quite an unintensive task and I've rarely if ever plugged my phone in and used earphones at the same time. But most of the times I use Bluetooth earphones anyway. I love my Jaybirds and the QC35s. That said, I do understand how this might be an annoyance for a lot of people. But c'est la vie, this is the direction that Apple's chosen to go and using a proprietary connectors isn't anything new for iOS users or Apple users anyway. The next major change is with the home button. Apple stitched the physical home keys of generations past and has gone with a capacitive key here, just like ones found on the likes of the OnePlus 3. The difference here is the Taptic engine. You have three levels of Taptic feedback to pick from, Taptic feedback. This kind of makes you feel like you're physically pressing the home key. It takes some getting used to, I got used to it quick and I really had no issues with it barring the few times my fingers were wet and the phone refused to detect my press. The display resolution remains unchanged, 750 by 1334 pixels spread over 4.7 inches making for a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. I really wish Apple had put in at least a 1080p panel here. Yes, the display is brighter than its predecessor, it covers a wider color gamut. It's a nice display, agreed, but after using Quad HDs with Android, it kind of feels a little weird for a while. Things aren't as sharp as you'd expect them to be, and that's kind of weird, especially on a phone with this price tag. Talking about Android phones, I really loved using the iPhone 7 for the form factor. With Android these days, you see display sizes increasing and with that, the overall footprint. A nice compact phone is something you rarely get to see these days, especially with Sony not selling their compact phones here in India. So the iPhone 7 was a pleasure to use, a compact device that's power packed and power packed it is. Underneath the hood, Apple using their quad core 8 and fusion chip and that keeps things chugging along quite nicely. No matter what I threw at it, the iPhone 7 had few issues running it. And with day to day usage, iOS 10 on the iPhone 7 was snappy and consistent. The consistency is something I've really grown to appreciate. Apps launch uniformly quick and the memory management despite just 2 gigs of RAM was great. The user experience was simply fantastic. I appreciate a lot of the attention to detail shown by Apple. Right from simple things like quick access to a flashlight from the control center to the wake on pickup. This is something we've seen with a lot of Android phones in the past but I've never seen a better implementation. The detection was spot on, worked every single time, and it also put an end to the problem of fingerprint scanners getting too quick for us to see what's on the lock screen. Pick up, check the lock screen for notifications, and if you want, place the finger on the scanner and unlock. And the scanner is real fast and accurate. 3D Touch has also been integrated more tightly with iOS 10, and, and it went from being a novelty factor that I rarely used 
to being a feature that I found myself using occasionally. Still not a must have for me, but definitely more useful from the last time I used it while testing the success. If you are someone who's been using an iPhone with 3D Touch for a while now, let me know in this poll if 3D Touch is something you use every day. I'm just curious to know. Anyway, as happy as I was with the iPhone 7, some of my regular issues with iOS of course resurfaced. Things like the inability to share a picture to Facebook pages from the gallery or having to jump back to the menu to switch resolutions or the inability to add a number row to the keyboard are things that as a long time Android user I found really annoying. But once I managed to look past it, I really did enjoy my time with the iPhone 7. I actually ended up using it as my primary device for almost 3 weeks. That's longer than I usually test phones. And initially, I was really wary about the battery life in particular given that it only has a 1960 mAh battery underneath and that by Android standards is minuscule. But no, the iPhone 7 did manage to last through a full day of moderate usage on a single charge on most days. And the advantage of having a small battery is that even without quick charge, it managed to charge back to 100% quite fast. Sometimes I'd connect it to my PC via USB and come back to see the battery level up by 20%, something I'm not used to with Android. That was kinda nice. So circling back to the camera, Apple's again gone for refinement here. It still is 12 megapixels, but the aperture is wider f1.8, we've got optical image stabilization as well, and the flash is a quad LED dual tone flash. Images shot with this camera are not great, lots of detail, the colors were accurate and the dynamic range brilliant. HDR is also implemented well. Here are a few more samples. Even under low light, the iPhone 7 delivers. Some of the best images I've seen shot with a smartphone, comparable to anything Android has to offer. The quad LED flash was great too. The iPhone 7 can shoot 4K video and also has a dedicated 1080p 60fps option. The video quality is great, sharp, lots of detail, good dynamic range, smooth footage with a stable frame rate. The selfie camera is up to 7 megapixels now and managed to do a good job. Overall, Apple's put together quite a nice package here with the iPhone 7. While it's not a great departure from the 6s and the 6 before it, it definitely is a welcome refinement. If you own a 6s, I don't really see why you should upgrade given that Apple offers great software support and a lot of features have been made available to the 6s with the iOS 10 update. But if you own an iPhone older than the 6, then the 7 might be a great upgrade. If you're an Android user, switching to Apple does definitely have its own quirks. A lot of things that we take for granted, granted are a hassle or flat out cannot be done on iOS. But the iPhone 7 is a lot more consistent and if you're willing to stick it out, odds are you'd definitely be happy with the 7. And of course, as long as you're willing to put up with the steep prices, here in India the 7 starts at 60,000 rupees for the 32 gig variant and without expandable storage, if you'd want to go for the next variant, the 128 gig variant, you'd be looking at 70,000 rupees. That's definitely expensive, but for the price, like I said, Apple's put together quite a compelling package. Anyway, if you do decide to pick an iPhone 7 up, use my affiliate links to both Amazon.com and .in. You can find them in the description below. So anyway guys, that's it. These are my thoughts on the iPhone 7. Do you agree with them? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments and Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, vote it down if you didn't. For more videos, hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ash here from C4E Tech, signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye bye now.